Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. It's the question everybody wants to know the answer to. When will Starship fly next? Ahoy tank watchers, Jack here for NSF with this week's Starbase update for you. This week, SpaceX made outstanding progress cleaning up and repairing the launch site. And as the initial shock of what we now know is relatively minor damage wears off, we begin to contemplate the ultimate question. When will Starship fly next? This week we'll try and wrap our heads around that question, plus we'll talk about the next two prototypes potentially in line. So let's jump right into it. The week started off with the arrival and setup of a drilling rig that will be used to drill foundation piers at the orbital launch site and around the facility. If you remember how the orbital launch site was built, first they drilled a whole bunch of very deep holes. They filled those holes with rebar and then filled the rebar filled holes with concrete. The same exact process is happening here. This rig has been used around and under the launch mount, working to shore up this area after it was blasted by 33, uh, I mean 30 Raptor engines. Or maybe it's less of a repair job and the work is just to prepare it for installation of what surely will be a heavy deluge system comprised of massive steel plates. Over at the launch table itself, things are busy. We see the return of loads of scaffolding, and workers are very busy replacing and repairing things. This goes for every other area of the launch site as well, including the tank farm, the area below the pad, the pad itself, and the surrounding area. It is quite a bustling place right now. In this shot, you can even see some launch tower cladding repair work in progress. Meanwhile, on Highway 4, we've been seeing some trench work leading from the production site to the launch site alongside the road. This logically would be some ground service piping to the launch site, things like data and electricity lines. The Boca Chica area has undergone loads of power infrastructure improvements over the past few years, including the replacement of overhead lines with underground road crossings to facilitate tall objects being moved up or down Highway 4. Right now, the power lines stop before the production site, and major power needs at the launch site are handled by a current power line that is buried alongside Highway 4 already, and four or five semi-truck-sized generators next to the lock side of the orbital tank farm. This work could be SpaceX providing the launch site with redundancy and increased power supply. Indeed, later in the week, we saw power cables installed in this freshly dug trench. Earlier, I mentioned the foundation work below and around the orbital launch mount. And yes, work in that area to prepare it for launch two is ongoing. Once again, based on comments made by Elon, we expect this system will use steel plates and some fancy plumbing to disperse water at the ground level underneath the vehicle and mount like a shower head. This technique is expected to help better dissipate the energy released during a Starship launch and ensure the forces are more evenly distributed and absorbed. So given this flurry of activity, can we make any informed decisions about when the next launch will take place? Despite my initial gloom and doom upon seeing the damage to the launch site, I now think maybe four to six months is a better estimate. Of course, keeping in mind that this is a total guess on my part, but that would translate to sometime in October. SpaceX will have to finish repairing damaged GSE, finish shoring up and expanding the foundation below the launch mount, install the deluge system, and maybe even construct additional tank farm infrastructure. Though I suppose that part might not be strictly necessary for the next launch, and more of a long lead item. It's a tall order for a four to six month timeline, to be sure, but not impossible. Let's break from the production and launch site and take a look at Massey. This is still the home of various test tanks, including the S26.1 test tank, the NC31 test nose cone, and of course, SHIP-25. SHIP-25 underwent some testing over the week to cryogenically proof it. Whether this is just for testing the equipment at the Massey site, or if SHIP-25 still has a chance to be a real test or flight hardware prototype remains to be seen. The odds are not in SHIP-25's favor, but only time will tell what will happen to it. However, not only SHIP-25 got some attention, the S26.1 test tank also had some work done to it. You can see here the cherry picker parked at the tank and somebody is on top of it. Here we can see the access hatch to SHIP-25 is open. This allows workers to get inside the ship and work on the vehicle and its tanks. Now, if you wanna get inside your bank account and figure out why you're spending so much money on various subscriptions, Check out our sponsor for this video, Rocket Money. Here's Nick to tell you more. Before I came to Starbase to chase rockets, I was actually an accountant, so I can't provide financial advice, but I can tell you about today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an exciting new app that gives its members awesome personal finance tools. Rocket Money securely analyzes your previous transaction history to identify trends and find subscriptions that you may have forgotten about. And Rocket Money also allows you to cancel those subscriptions super easily from within the app with just one tap. Something I can give two thumbs up to is Rocket Money's personal budgeting tools. Rocket Money allows you to create personal budgets that fit your lifestyle and your needs. The final amazing technology 
technology that Rocket Money uses is an automatic bill negotiation tool. Simply upload an image and click a button and Rocket Money will do all the hard work for you to negotiate with your telecommunications provider or your internet service provider to make sure that you are getting the lowest possible rate. Click the link in the description below, scan the QR code on the video, or visit rocketmoney.com NSF to try it out for free and unlock features with premium. Thanks so much to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Thanks, Nick. All right, moving back to the launch site now and taking a look at the legs of the orbital launch mount, we can see that the ablative paint that was on those legs has been given a serious thrashing by the launch. As we get closer to the next test campaign, SpaceX will undoubtedly repaint these legs to protect the pad. So we'll keep our eyes out for that happening. Next up, let's take a look at the all-important booster QD or quick disconnect. The BQD is tasked with the deceptively simple role of allowing propellants, electricity, data, and other commodities to flow in and out of the vehicle before retracting and hiding in its protective shell at liftoff. The BQD has been retracted and extended a few times since the launch, so let's hope its protective cover worked and the QD is in good shape. It certainly looks like it is. They'll absolutely need a fully functional BQD for the next launch, so of course that's also something to watch. Moving along, we also saw some work done on the chopsticks and their carriage system. After that first launch, we were a little bit worried about what happened to the drawworks and the whole entire chopstick system. Well, since the launch, SpaceX has demonstrated the chopsticks closing, opening, as well as their horizontal and vertical movement. So, they seem to be in decent shape. This could be part of inspections, qualifications, and yes, repair work to prepare the chopsticks to stack and launch future vehicles. Maybe someday even catch them. Over at the Rocket Garden, Ship 26 is still attached to a crane. Ship 26 is of course an expendable starship without flaps or tiles that is one of the contenders to be used in the next full stack flight. Some FAA paperwork has even been seen to suggest that Ship 26 is indeed next, but based on comments from Elon, it seems that not even SpaceX knows which ship will fly yet. Friendly reminder, Ship 26 passed cryotesting, was moved back to the production site, and now has all six Raptor engines installed on it, just feet away from the road where you can stand and look at them. To use a technical term, that's pretty cool. Moving right along, we can see further hardware for the next mega bay arriving on site. SpaceX has started to assemble and prepare segments of the new factory building, and we expect it to begin rising out of the ground very soon. We also got a peek inside the mega bay extension, where they take deliveries for the vehicles in production inside that bay. It looks like some equipment is being installed, maybe an HVAC system? This area is accessible from a recently constructed street behind the mega bay, leading to the rocket garden. Meanwhile, a few hundred feet up in the air, some of the remaining scaffolding at the top of the mega bay has been taken down. As the facility edges slowly towards completion. Over at the launch site, foundation and repair work continues, with several holes having been drilled and rebar being lowered into them. We saw this multiple times during the last week, as they continued reinforcing the pad and preparing it for installation of the new deluge system. Also, we can see some old piping that has been removed from the destroyed area under the mount. You can see the heavy wear and tear on these pipes. They must have been damaged and destroyed during the first launch inferno. Next up, let's look at some deliveries we've seen over the past week. Some giant pipes were delivered, probably for a deluge system, and a prefabricated office structure was delivered for the launch site. Thanks again to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Try it out for free and activate more features with premium by going to rocketmoney.com NSF or click the link in the description below. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments what you think the next booster and ship pairing will be. Don't forget to check out our latest This Week in Space Flight here or maybe watch this video here. All right, thanks for watching and as always, be excellent to each other.